Hi there, welcome back to the chapter environment. Did you know what is the meaning of Wangari Matai in Kenyan language? Born out of the gods. Looks like Madam was true to her name. She is one of those people in this world who live for a cause. There are people who live to do good for other humans, to do good for the nature, to do good for animals. They have just one reason to live a life, that is to do good for others. It's so selfless of them to be like that. So let's see how she brought about change in Africa. What happened when you started working with the women? So when Madam realized that the Green Belt Movement had to be started, how she, did she bring the people together and how did she accomplish this? The first time when she told them, let's plant trees, the women said they did not know anything about it. So she asked the foresters. Foresters are special people who know how to grow a particular tree in which part of the land. They are specialists. So she called a bunch of them to come down, educate the ladies and teach them. But they were very complicated. They were professionals. It became so difficult for the illiterate women to even understand what they were saying. So then she told the women, chuck that aside and just use your common sense. Just do what we do with any seed. We shall use a common sense. Women work on farms. She knew it, that they know how to sow. They know how to put in life into the soil. And she trained them to do the same. They are the ones who cultivate. They are the ones who produce food. So she told them that seeds of trees are like any other seed. So if they were to treat these tree seeds the same way as they treat other crop seeds that they sow, they will find no difference. They'll easily able to understand how to grow trees. She told them to bring old broken pots, put seeds in it and watch them germinate. And then these seedlings were transferred into plastic bags, which were then later transported to the forests. Once they grew half a meter long, they could transplant them onto their farms. In the beginning, it was difficult, but soon they gained confidence and they transformed into competent foresters. Now they didn't need any professional to come and guide them. Now they know, take the seeds, germinate them, make them into seedlings, give them nutrition and then transplant them wherever you wish. That's how you restore forests. Now, Madam called those set of women foresters without diplomas. There's no degree. They learnt it themselves. Why do you think they responded so well to your message? So, how come everybody's listening to you? They asked. So, what did Madam answer? It was a need. Sometimes when people are in a dire need for something, they're missing something vital in their life, if you give them a solution, a logical solution, they will listen. When the women said they needed firewood and building material, we responded to that. She went to them saying, I have something that will help you. Plant trees. They will grow and they will give you firewood. In the tropics, trees grow very fast. In five to ten years, these trees serve as firewood, as building material. She told them, a little hard work, a few years, and you can do it yourself. You don't have to wait for some knight in shining armor to come and fight for you and create forests for you. Let's do it ourselves, she said. Once we had planted those trees, we saw the need for them to understand why we should have good governance. See, governance is not only what the political government does. It became important to give them civic education. What is governance? They should understand how to govern themselves. Why we govern ourselves and the way we govern ourselves, that means 
governing is all about setting rules and following them for the benefit of everyone. So why don't you start governing yourself? Put rules, start implementing them yourself. If a group of 100 people start governing themselves, start doing good things themselves, in unity, a good environment will arise out of it. Yes or no? And then, looking at us, the political government will realize that people are not stupid. We have to live up to their expectations. And we can force the government too to do good just the way we were doing good for ourselves and our society. Why we are managing our environment the way we are managing it? She wanted those ladies to set an example that this is how you repair a situation and this is how you find a solution and we are capable of doing it ourselves. Because we were dealing with the environment, we gave them education in both civic and environment. That means she told the people there how to go about it and what to do. That made them understand clearly why they should take up the responsibility of protecting their environment. That it is not the responsibility of the government or the responsibility of somebody else to come and rehabilitate their environment on their own land. It's them and it's their responsibility. I'll give you an example. When we were in college, we knew a man who would save full-grown trees. Sometimes during road widening projects, the government just brings in bulldozers and removes trees from the way. But this man, he would take his team he would take his bulldozers and do what? He would gently pull out the huge, mature tree, carry it safely to another place and transplant it. He knew the value behind a 40-year-old tree. He couldn't see them cut down. So when we heard this in college, we could have sat in our benches and thought, oh, wow, yay, Uday Krishna, you're doing a great job. No, we didn't do that. We packed our bags, we went there, all of us together, we stood there and we cheered for him. Maybe we couldn't help him in literally taking the trees, but we supported him because we knew his cause was amazing. And when someone's doing something great, when someone is teaching you how to take care of yourself, how to take care of your own society, your own surroundings, you must join hands. You must join them. Support them. Once you learn to support, someday you will start doing it yourself. Remember, it's us. It's our responsibility. When we do it, the people above us will bow down and join us. The next question was, okay, all this you've done, but what was the final product? What transformations did you see? See what she says. One of the bigger transformations that she saw was the ability of an ordinary illiterate woman to get to understand and to be able to plant trees that in five or ten years became big trees and she was able to cut them and was able to give herself energy that means fire, firewood, able to sell those trees give herself an income to be able to feel confident that she had done something for herself. Now this is something that can fill your heart and stomach and could give you sound sleep when you know that you were able to help someone stand on their feet. They are no more begging for help. You've made them help themselves. That sense of pride and sense of dignity that they're not begging. They're not begging in front of the government anymore. Oh, please, we need forests. Oh, please, we need food, money. No, they did it for themselves. That they're doing things for themselves and that was very empowering. Empowering means giving yourself the power to do something. Don't wait for someone else to come, hold your hand and help you do. Empower yourself. 
This transformation was very powerful. It meant a lot to her. The other, another transformation she saw was a literal transformation in the landscape. Dry trees, no trees, vacant areas without any forest. Places where there was dust, there was no more dust. There were trees, birds, rabbits. The local flora and fauna began to return. They come back and they make the environment so beautiful. There is a shade and sometimes even dry springs come back because the water is not running. What she's saying is, sometimes you see dry lakes and dry rivers. Why? Because initially the forest that has now grown is soaking every bit of drop that's coming in the form of rains into the ground. That's amazing. First, when the ground fills, then the lakes and rivers will fill. Very profound transformation, she says, a dry land became lush and beautiful. And the other transformation was, this is one of the major transformations that's needed even in today's world, the willingness of people to fight for their rights. You cannot let people deprive you of something that you deserve. That is your right to decide that they have a right to good, clean environment, to decide that they will fight for their forests, they will protect their forests, and they will not allow corrupt leaders to take their public land. The willingness of a person, when a person has the strength to stand up and speak and say, what you're doing is wrong, you cannot wrong us like this, what a wonderful society it would build. And mind you, she gave them that power. Finally, what is the one thing we can do is what the reporter is asking her. She says, for me, my greatest activity is to plant a tree. I think that a tree is a wonderful symbol for the environment. And when we plant a tree, we plant hope. We plant the future for ourselves, for our children, for the birds, for the animals, for the rivers, for the air. We plant something that will last long after we are gone. So next time that you go out, you venture out, you see a tree in your neighborhood, look at it. Look at it and understand that we need this. Don't think it's just some random plant around your house. Trees are home to flora and fauna, insects, animals, microbes. Trees bring rain. Rains fill rivers. Rivers feed the world. And we can stay alive only if we have all of these. Just remember, we don't want our grandchildren to look at beautiful posters and say, Mama, what is this? What is this greenery? What lovely parks they are. How come they're not here now? And that day, we will not have an answer. We can only give them dreams that, yes, when I was young, it was like this. That is the saddest state in this world. If we want our future generations to see a thriving forest, a flowing river, birds and animals, and people happily living in, in this world, we have to start today. Take care of your local greenery. And please learn more about what this wonderful lady has done in this world. Our next topic too will deal about animal extinction. That is one more another huge discussion. I will see you there. Bye-bye.